Hello there, this is Tom from Never Center. I'm going to show you in this video what we've added in the latest update to Pixel Mesh, which is version 1.0.20. Um, it's not a big number increment here, but actually we've added some pretty major features that uh, several people have requested, so I think you're going to like this one quite a bit. Uh, let me just start with our um, biggest feature. You can see I named this file rigged. Um, what we've the, one of the biggest things that we've added is with, um, with your layers now, you can have custom pivot points. So, uh, for example, this uh, left thigh on this guy, um, you can move the pivot point, it will show up it just as the center handle in your, in your transform tool. And you can just drag it and move it so that when you rotate something, um, it will rotate around that or scale around it or whatever. And so with this guy, I've got him rigged up so that his shin has a pivot point at the knee and his foot has his pivot point at the ankle and then with the high res and if I if I hit the slash key you can see this is the high res thing that I've painted um, and that's why these transforms are able to still look nice when they're pixelized um, because it's converting that high res to low res but anyway um, with this auto shading and with the um, custom pivots and the way Pixel Mesh converts that high res to low res, you can do things that you could never do before with pixel art. This guy is not, you know, the most beautiful pixel art character, but hopefully you get the point of just how powerful this is, being able to have these custom pivot points. Um, and combined with um, layer organization like this with the parenting, you can make uh, fully rigged characters, which is pretty neat. Um, <clears throat> Let me open up another scene to show you uh, another important thing that we've added. Um, and you can see that file I've called game scene. So uh, what I'm going to show you right here is this export selected. So um, here we've got this setup. So say you're designing a game and you want to just design characters or elements within kind of the, the context of the game so you don't have to make it its own file. So like here I've got the I've got my game resolution set how I'd want it for the full game and I've designed a full scene with some clouds and here I've got some trees. And so say I was designing this tree and I want to uh, this is the small one there. And I want to export the tree as its own asset. Now I can do uh, export selected and it will the the size that it's using here is the size of the full document as it says here it will trim that down. So um, if you want to change the resolution or change the pixel scale, um, we'll do this at 10 so that this asset will be, uh, each pixel will actually be 10 by 10 pixels. But um, then I go to export it and I just do tree small, say for example. Um, then if I come here, you can see when I open up tree small file, it's just the tree and it's trimmed it to its bounds. Uh, and this also works with animation. So, Say with this tree, um, I'm just going to do a little animation here. Let me just quickly add one where I make it so that maybe the wind is blowing. So uh, actually, let's use this custom pivot point to make this branch bend a little bit. And this tree thing go. We'll make this branch bend a little bit also. Make this group of leaves come down. And you can see it's animated like that now. Um, so when I've got this, this layer selected now and I go to export selected, I can choose, I can still choose PNG sprite sheet, for example. Let's take this back down to pixel scale one. Um, and hit OK. And again, I'm doing, oh, did I do export selected? Let me just make sure I did export selected, PNG sprite sheet, pixel scale one. And then I'll call this tree small sprite sheet. And then if I go over and take a look at that, you can see that it um, it's uh, even though the bounds were different for each frame of this um, sprite of this animation, it updated it so that this will work out perfectly for a sprite sheet where the each um, this image will be divided perfectly in half and it will animate just like it does in this. So anyway, that can be really neat for um, designing characters and animations. Uh, for example, in a video game scene where you, you just want to see how it scales with everything and looks with everything, and you can make all your assets without having to make a separate file for each asset. 
Um, another thing that is kind of neat is a, it's just a layer effect that we've added. Let's do it on this, um, let's go to the ground beneath the medium tree, this color section here. Um, I'm going to add a new layer here. So this ground, uh, when I hold down on here, you can see that's what I'm working on here. I've got a layer that's that's a child of that. Um, I'm going to mask this layer to the parent just to, to make it easier to see what's going on here. But let's what let's do is let's, um, on this layer, I'm just going to draw a little pattern. Say we want this ground to have a little, well, let's do, let's do a little swirly kind of a thing. Use the pencil tool here. Um, <clears throat> now I'm going to add this new layer effect, which is repeat. And you can see what this is going to do is just going to repeat it X and Y. Um, and since it's masking it to parent, you can see what happens if I turn off mask to parent. It will just fill the whole scene. But with mask to parent, I can have it uh, so I can make a layer, uh, sort of a pattern. You could do a, a dither pattern or whatever and have it just apply to the parent layer. I can do scaling or whatever. And you can see uh, there's some parameters here to like give some spacing to it. Um, I can limit it so that it's, you know, on the y-axis it's only got one copy of it and on the x infinite, zero is for infinite. Um, I can do, you know, whatever. But um, anyway, it's a neat layer effect um, and uh, can be useful for making bricks or whatever where you don't want to paint or, you know, even if you if you paint one and then copy it, a hundred times, um, it can be much handier to have it dynamically editable so that if I want to come in and edit this uh, pattern, I don't have to copy it to other places or manually redo anything and it will automatically um, change it as I update it. So that's a neat layer effect. Um, just a couple of uh, other little things. Um, one is that on the... Um, let me remove that because it's not actually that great of a pattern. Um, on the colorize uh, layer effect, we added this coloring style dropdown so that it can either do it based on hue or it can do a solid color. So with hue, it's just um, it's colorizing sort of, it might be hard to see because of, I've got this shadow layer on there. but. Um, Sometimes the color isn't exactly the color that you choose here to colorize it isn't exactly the color here that you'll see because what it's doing is it's it's uh, determining how to color it based on um, the hue and saturation and value and it's keeping this the saturation and value basically. But if I change it to solid, uh, it will color the whole layer to be exactly what color, whatever color you choose in here. Um, so anyway, you can play around with that and you'll see. Uh, as you try it out exactly what it does but um, it's a handy effect to have in there and then um, just one other quick thing this is more of a bug fix but um, with the color dropper tool it used to be that when you would um, say I was gonna use the color dropper to pick up one of these colors I'll just hit I had to do that it used to if you had the grid lines on it would pick up the grid lines when you had this or if there was like a, a paint tool active or something there are other things besides just the pixels in here that it would that the uh, color dropper would pick up, pick up, but we fixed that. But you can still use it on the interface over here to get colors from a palette or colors from something else down here or up here or whatever. Um, but uh, we made the color dropper tool much more useful. Um, anyway, those are the main things in uh, this new version, and uh, these are directly responding to user feedback. So um, definitely uh, when you have an idea, come up to the help uh, menu and choose send feedback. And you can send us an email that will uh, tell us your ideas. And when we get, especially when we get several people saying the same thing, like with these custom pivots or this color dropper thing, um, then that makes us want to add it and we'll add it pretty quick. Uh, we're excited about the pace of the updates have been going. And um, we'd love to hear your feedback and we'd love to see what you're making with Pixel Mash and we hope you'll love this update. Thanks.